All right, for the next step, we're going to be preparing the limit switches for the X, Y, and Z axis. The Z, the first one that I have here, you're going to need to remove the metal piece a little bit. Um, all you need to do to remove it is to squeeze it in at the end here where it connects and then lift it out. All right, you're also going to need some wires for these end stops. Uh, for the Z, you're going to need 25 centimeters, um, 25 centimeters for the Y as well, and then you're going to need um, 400 or so for the X. So I've got all those pre-cut. Here's my handy dandy meter stick here. Next thing I'm going to do is just strip a little bit of wire off the ends so that way I can um, solder them to the end stops. You don't really need to remove much. Probably about that much would be plenty or even less. I'll go ahead and do that for every or for um, each wire. This is a nice stripper tool. There, there are other ones, but I do a lot of uh, soldering, so a lot of tend to do a lot of this work type of work. So I like to have tool, the good tools. You can buy this on Amazon for I don't know twenty bucks. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is ten the ends of the wires and the end stop so that way the solder will easily go in there. Oops, I just realized I still have my tool on for the heat inserts. Alright, now I've got the right tip on and I'm going to go ahead and tin these just on the ends. Just lightly touch them. That's all you need to do. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the wires. Just going to tin a little bit of solder on here. And then I will simply solder these to the tip that I just did. Here we go. Same procedure for the other wire. <clears throat> okay, those are pretty good. I'm also a big fan of heat shrink, so I just put some on the ends here, and at the end I'm going to use my heat gun to heat shrink everything up. Okay, I'm going to repeat the same process on the Z. Okay, that one's better. Yeah, that's a little better. Alright, and pretty much the same procedure with the last one, and then you've got them all done. And this is what I use for doing heat shrink, it's just a Wagner heat gun. I just turn it on for a few seconds. As it warms up, I just drag it over to the top of the heat shrink and you can kind of see it shrink right up. That's it. I'll just do those for each uh, end stop. And um, I don't think it's mandatory that you do this, but I don't like to have bare metal exposed typically. Alright, I'm going to do the X one first. And this one fits right over the extrusion. Okay, I've got it in the right orientation now, and I'm just going to sink the screw. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Okay, and I've just placed the Y end stop here. It's a little tricky to get in to screw, but, um, you know, with a little bit of patience, and you, can, uh, you should be able to get to it. Gently screw it in. You certainly don't want to overturn these, because they are self-tapping. Okay, I think I'm good. You also want to make sure that your switch is in this orientation where it's open at the top. And basically the Y is going to hit that. Yep, and it clicked. And then same thing with the X. There's going to be a screw that we have to add here. And then it'll, it'll basically hit that end stop and click it. So that's how it's going to home. All right, the Z end stop's a little different. You need to find this piece, which has a little Voron logo on it. And then this needs to go in here in that orientation with the same M2 self-threaded screws. And here it is with the screws all the way in. You should be able to hit the button and have clearance. At this point, you might be wondering where the Z end stop goes. And that's going to go on this extrusion about 2 millimeters from the top. The other thing that you're going to need to do is put in a M3 screw here. Um, and then luckily... Uh, I had one T-nut left, 
So I'm hoping I don't need too many more, but I may have to print some more. But you're gonna mount this end stop with these nuts. You're gonna have to use a ball end screwdriver because it's kind of tight clearance. Okay, I found it easiest to slide the screw in with the T-nut on it, at least for this one. And then you're gonna take your ball end driver screw and tighten it up. All right, now to finish what we just did, so it's useful, we need to put in an M3 by 12 and I'm gonna check that it hits, but I don't think this needs to go in too far. I'm guessing maybe a few turns, just so it's there. All right, so now I'm gonna test it, make sure that I'm hitting the button. I'm just gonna raise up the bed manually, twisting it. Let's see where we got. Yep, heard it click, okay.